Hey, what's happening, guys? What's going on, YouTube? You've tuned into Rules for Rebels and another episode of Weird Products Daily. Weird Products Daily is a new daily series we're doing where we share weird products, interesting items, impulse buy type items, and, and just kind of weird stuff you maybe haven't seen before. The goal of these videos is to just kind of get those creative juices flowing, get you guys thinking about different niches, different products that you can roll out. A lot of these products are very appealing to drop shippers. These are unique items people haven't seen before. Uh, do great for impulse buy type items, which typically is what does best with drop shipping. Uh, those of you guys who are private labelers, a lot of the times these products are great in theory, poor in execution, so maybe you can find a manufacturer and improve upon them. And really, whether you're an affiliate marketer, marketer in e-commerce, whatever else, just kind of get your get your brain moving, get things thinking about uh, you know different products, different niches, different hustles, etc. So uh, today's product uh, not as impressive or weird as some of the stuff we've seen before, uh, but I did think there were a couple maybe kind of good lessons we could take away from this product. Uh, this is kind of that like vintage army guy. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of us had, had those kind of little plastic army toys that you get at the dollar store, Walgreens, whatever, when you were a kid. I remember uh, I used to have cowboy and Indian ones. And I remember me and my cousins at my grandparents' house. My grandparents had this uh, this uh, fireplace and it was made out of like, you know, all these like odd shaped like black lava stones. It was pretty cool. Uh, but we would like, you know, there were little ledges and stuff. And we would put all these uh, cowboys and Indians, and I think probably army guys too, up all over the fireplace and then we'd sit across the room and shoot rubber bands at them and try to knock them down uh the days before playstation and social media right uh, but anyhow uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys have memories of these things from as a child uh this is by a company called foster and rye it's a foster and rye army man bottle holder uh no this isn't going to launch your your wine bottle across the room doesn't do anything crazy it's not motorized it's basically just kind of a tabletop statue kind of a, a conversation piece um, but kind of the lesson we can take away from this, I, I think, is uh, kind of combining niches. So like wine is a popular niche, right? People buy like the rabbit bottle opener and people buy shelves for, for their wine and things to display their wine and uh, things to keep on the table to make wine a conversation piece. Like wine is a niche that people are very interested in and people who are into wine tend to buy a lot of stuff, right? They buy a lot of wine. They buy a lot of wine accessories. A lot of people will decorate their homes with wine stuff. And, and what, what this product kind of does is combine two niches. So a lot of times wine stuff is kind of classier, fancier, right? Um, but here we have, you know, an army guy that holds a bottle of wine. So who would this appeal to? Well, anybody who grew up with army toys might find this cool. Uh, this might be neat for uh, like a man cave or a game room or something like that. Uh, anybody who's into kind of like pop culture stuff and has like a really kind of like modern kind of like pop culture uh, style to their home. I've seen some... some uh, I used to know a lady who was kind of into interior design, and she had, like, her whole house was very kind of, like, Andy Warhol-ish. Uh, but this, you know, this could appeal to people who are into, like, pop culture and things like that. People in the military, this could appeal to people in the military. So a lot of times by kind of combining or co-mingling two niches, yeah, you have a smaller audience. You're not going to get the wine snobs to buy this, but the people who are into pop culture and wine or the people who are in the military and into wine or the guys who, um, like, video games or childhood reminiscent things and wine these people are going to be super drawn to this product so i guess kind of the lesson to take away from this product is a lot of times if you co-mingle niches yeah you're going to have a smaller audience but the audience who does like that product is going to be super into it now i've given a lot of examples uh of doing this before with uh amazon merch shirts right so like you know everybody's making father's day shirts but what if you make a father's day shirt for gay fathers or dog fathers or adoptive fathers or fathers who like badminton you know when you really start to niche down yeah it's going to be a smaller audience but the people who your item does appeal to uh it really appeals to them a lot uh this product doesn't have a lot of reviews so i'm not sure um how well it sells let's look and see if it even has a so almost one million uh in home and kitchen however it's not ranked bad this is like a very small subcategory tabletop wine racks uh, but it could be ranked worth there. So I wouldn't be surprised if this thing uh, sells a little bit. There's no um, no reviews as of yet. You know, let's open up a tab. And I wanted to, uh, what was the name of the company who made this? It was uh, Foster and Rye. I'm just kind of curious to see if they have any other kind of interesting wine racks. Uh, another thing, you know, what other niches could you make a wine rack appeal to? Obviously, a wine rack has... Okay, so it looks like they have like a puppy dog drinking wine. 
Uh, they have an Army Man bottle opener, kind of a gear one. So they, they got some kind of neat stuff. Um, but, they, they, you know, they, they kind of beat me to it. I was just going to say, what other kind of niches could you appeal to with wine holders? So um, I'm not as creative as these guys. I, I was going to jokingly make a reference to like a Ron Jeremy one where the wine bottle is Ron Jeremy's, you know, wiener. Um, I'm not that creative, but they got a guy swinging a baseball bat. They got a moose for the people who are into camping. This one's for the baseball fans. This one's for the, the Labrador lovers. Um, you know, so they, they got some stuff to appeal to kind of different niches, you know, for the cowboy wine lover, for the cowboy wine lover, for, uh, uh, for the hunter, for the gun lover. Uh, so they got something kind of for everybody there. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, not the most exciting or the weirdest product we've ever done. Uh, but I thought there were some lessons that we can kind of take away from this one. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, join me tomorrow for another episode of Weird Products Daily. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning for another episode of Weird Products Daily.